Well, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. It has been a while since I posted a video. It was the summer of music for me and my husband and uh, that is continuing but in slightly different ways. And I'll give a little life update toward the end of this video. Uh, today I have come to share with you my impressions after warming the entire uh, new collection for the Fall and Winter Catalog for Scentsy. So there are 10 new fragrances uh, and I've warmed them all. Each had a day unto itself. And then I also warmed the Harvest Collection. So we'll see how we do on time. I may put them into a separate video. And then I'll do a little life update at the end. But by means of introduction, this is indeed an upright base, the newest member of the family and uh, I have quite fallen in love with him, so uh, he is sharing the screen today. I do have my little cat in my lap, and she may uh, show her face sometime during this video. Here, let me see if I can tip this down. There she is. That's my Clemmy. Here's my baby. So, let's see, I think that's probably good. Sorry for all the wobbling. And then the other addition, <laughs> was from the Scentsy Summer Collection, the uh, the travel pillow, and it's the unicorn. And it is uh, memory foam and just so soft and adorable, this little smile. And uh, I'm quite fond of it. I think there's a blue one coming as part of the fall collection. So uh, I will have to get him as well and make the set complete. So on to the 10 new scents. And I think this needs to go thus. There we go. So I divided these into C, B, and A categories, which I like to do, C being my least favorite, B being, being ones that I liked, but wouldn't necessarily get again, or, or wouldn't necessarily put in my club. I like them, I might get them again, but the B group are just kind of so-so for me, but they're okay. And then the A group are my favorites. So I had three in the C group, after all this time, I feel like, wow, you know, I've been away for a while, and then I come back and be snarky right off the bat, <laughs> but it is what it is. I have three in the B group that I liked well enough, and then four in the A group that I liked quite well, with two of those getting special honors. So let's start with the C group. So these are the, my least favorite of the ten. So first of all, and these are my impressions, right? They may not be yours. I'm sure there are people who agree and people who will not agree. So don't come for me now and uh, recognize this is in my home. I have a smaller home. I have low ceilings. And so I'm probably going to get better throw than I, I would if this had large open areas and high ceilings, which, which we don't have. So just say that by means of caveat. So first off, we have frosty air which is kind of a light blue wax. And Frosty Air is described as Citrus Lily of the Valley and Frosty Air. So I was, in, I was looking forward to this one because I love Lily of the Valley. But this one to me is very dominated by the Frosty Air. And you do get a bit of citrus, just a light amount of floral. This to me is a cousin of Fluffy Fleece. Quite similar in its bracing kind of frosty quality and then a bit of citrus so it's slightly sweeter and brighter than frosty than fluffy fleece is but it's just got kind of a strong laundry component for me that frosty air took over the show it's a great performer eight to nine for 24 hours it did not let up this was a steady high performer but it just that frosty air to me was um, just a bit sharp and very laundry-esque um, probably would be really nice in laundry, but for me in the house, I wasn't a real big fan. So that is Frosty Air, the first of the 10. Then next we have, I was so disappointed in cranberry and cardamom. Now on cold, I thought, okay, uh, the scent notes to me are a little bit unusual. Uh, cherry is listed first, then white cranberry. And a white cranberry to me is a more mild cranberry. It doesn't have as strong of a fruity flavor or scent. And then it says hint of cardamom. Well, hint, they're not kidding. I, I really didn't get any cardamom on cold or on warm. 
So the cranberry is kind of a mild cranberry and that's pleasant enough. But then that cherry, it's kind of like a cherry Kool-Aid to me. So it's like a weak cranberry with cherry Kool-Aid and no cardamom. So I was disappointed. This one was also not a real great performer. Um, this was a, a six to a seven. It took a long time to get off the ground. Hung out at a six to a seven. Now it was long lasting. It stayed come pretty steadily at a six to a seven for 24 hours. All these were melted in 24 watt uh, bulb warmers, by the way. So it didn't, it, to me, this didn't really smell like cranberry as much as it did the cherry Kool-Aid with a, just a touch of the tang of the cranberry. So it's kind of disappointed in it. And therefore, it, it, I had it on the edge, on the fence between a B and a C, but ended up in the C category because of that cherry Kool-Aid. So that's cranberry and cardamom right there. And again, you know, you may, you may feel differently about these. Everybody's nose is different and so on. The final one in the C group is my least favorite of the C group. And that one is Fall Feelin', which is kind of a orangish brown pumpkin kind of color wax. And again, I had high hopes. Um, blood orange, sugary cranberry, juniper sprigs, sparkling clove and crisp day so not sure what crisp day is you know what that oil is about so the problem i had here it started off okay but the blood orange was slightly sour and then the sugared cranberry wasn't to me that sugary it was more of a tart cranberry which normally i love and then juniper by itself to me is always quite tart so you had three things there that were on the tart side and it started out okay, just from, again, from a scent quality standpoint, but this one, as time went on, at least to my nose, just became more and more sour. This was a decent performer. Um, it was about an eight for 10 hours. And at the 10 hour mark, I did something I never do, but did this time, I had to turn this off. I just couldn't stand it. It got more and more sour to my nose. Um, you know, I was just disappointed. I think that when blending, if you have that many things that are potentially sour, it needed something to complement that and bring that sourness back. We have sour orange, kind of a sour cranberry and, and very tart, biting juniper. So to me, this just was overall a sour fragrance and not my favorite. So that was fall feeling right there. And I hope I don't feel like that this fall. So... <clears throat> that was the C group. Now for the B group. Good, so we get to go into a little more positive territory here. So I have three in the B group. And again, these are ones I liked. I liked well enough. I wouldn't necessarily, um, I won't be putting these in my club. I don't know that I would get them again, but they're okay. And I'll enjoy the rest of, the, of what I have left of these. So the first one I have is Frosted Cedar. And this, this one I would really give about a B+. Plus. It's a lovely kind of load in green. And this one, it's interesting because it's, um, when you think of frosted cedar, I thought, oh, it's going to be icy, you know, that kind of icy note. But to the country, to me, the frosting here is almost an edible frosting. So the notes are red delicious apple, white cedar, and creamy vanilla. So a little different than what I was expecting from the name. This is more like a, a cedar branch with with some white fro sugary frosting over it, cake frosting, or like a like a frosting you'd put on thumbprint cookies. So this one, um, I liked the cedar. You know, I, well, if you know me at all, you know I love cedar. So the cedar note is beautiful, really, really pleasing. And it is a bit sweet because of the red delicious apple. And then you have that creamy vanilla. So it's very nice, pretty edible. Now, after about eight hours, the vanilla began to fade away, and then it was more of, of an, a woody tone. So the cedar came through more later in the game. So the first 10 hours, more of like an edible woody um, fragrance, and then it became more woody, almost like an iced vanilla woods, but not cologne although I love that fragrance. It doesn't take on that cologne fragrance because, or quality because of the apple. So it's kind of a sweet, woody uh, note after that vanilla fades away. So an interesting one, kind of edible for the first eight to 10 hours. Good performer, um, about an eight for the first eight hours. And then it gradually faded over the next 
uh, you know, 16 hours until you got to at the 24 hour mark, it was a four. So it fell off gradually. It didn't fall off the map abruptly. It gradually faded. So pretty long lasting. It's a good performer. So I like that one. Frosted Cedar right there. The next one in the B group for me is uh, Red Current Wreath. And I, again, I, I was so looking forward to this and I like it well enough um, because I love current and I thought, oh, it's going to be beautiful. So if you, the, the notes are red currant, white berries, evergreen, and sandalwood. So I was looking forward to it because of the currant and the berries and then just a touch of the evergreen. But it's a, it's a little, as with the other one that I was describing with fall feeling where you had so many potentially sharp notes. Here too, you know, currant can be a bit tangy. The white berries here are not overly sweet. The evergreen is also, pine can be a little a little biting. So, and then it has sandalwood, but I didn't really pick up much sandalwood. I don't know if any of you may have, but I did not pick that up. So again, a lot of kind of tangy notes. Um, it's a little sharp, but it's, it's very pleasing. I like all the notes. I don't like sandalwood, so I was happy I couldn't, couldn't smell any. I mean, it's, it's pleasant. It just got a little sharp for me over time. So, but I liked it, and I will enjoy melting the rest of this because the uh, the red currant and the evergreen particularly were were beautiful. Just gets a little sharp over the duration. So that is red currant wreath right there. And finally, in the B group, we have um, make me snickerdoodle, which is kind of a beigeish wax right there. And this one is described as you might expect: brown sugar, cookie dough, vanilla bean and sugared cinnamon. So this was fine. Um, to me, kind of um, generic, if I may say. Now, what I did prefer, this one to our, our most recent Snickerdoodle entry, which I believe was in the Christmas collection last year or the year before, and that one to me was very buttery, almost a popcorn butter, and I didn't care for that, where this doesn't have that. This is more of a true Snickerdoodle cookie. You get the cinnamon. Um, to me, it's a little doughy. It's almost like an undercooked snickerdoodle, um, but but notwithstanding, it is pleasant, enjoyable, probably a crowd pleaser. You could melt this in your house, and I think everyone would enjoy it. You wouldn't offend anybody with this. Um, and it was a good performer, medium high. It was about an eight over all of the 24 hours, and I think by virtue of the brown sugar and the cinnamon, which really carried the day, because the vanilla kind of kind of faded vanilla bean. So long lasting, it was pleasant. So uh, that's make me snickerdoodle right there. It's a play on words, you know, make me snicker, parentheses, doodle. You know, they enjoy with the little word play. Then we come to the A group. So I have four entries in the A group. So I'll do the, the last two are my favorites. So the first two, which I also love, First, we have Palo Santo and Cinnamon, right there, a beige wax. So this is described as Palo Santo, which is a, a real warm wood, um, Italian bergamot, which is a citrus and can be quite biting, but here to me it was very, very subtle and in the background just gives it a little brightness, but not noticeable. And if that worried you that it would be cologne, it's not at all. And then clove leaf and cinnamon bark. So these spices are not overwhelming at all, very subtle in the background, but just give a little bit of kind of a dry spice. This isn't a sweet fragrance at all. So this to me was lovely. It is a warm wood, a little bit of brightness from the bergamot and a subtle amount of spicing, but primarily that beautiful warm Palo Santo. I thought this was gorgeous. It was, uh, you know, handled with beautiful taste. You know, just thought it was elegant and, and um, cozy and inviting. So just lovely. If you like Palo Santo, I think you will love this. It really was, to me, a beautiful treatment of that wood. Performance-wise, medium high and steady. This was about a seven for 24 hours. Steady, slow and steady wins the race. It was, it was uh, always present and always enjoyable. Didn't fade, I really like that. So that is Palo Santo and cinnamon right there. Then, so two of these have mahogany, and I was concerned because I, from Bath and Body Works, mahogany teak wood is not my favorite. So, but the, these 
and thankfully are not like that. So I wondered if they had an abundance of mahogany oil and that's why we had two out of the 10 that have mahogany, that's a little unusual, but to me both are handled beautifully. So the first of the two, so again, this is the, of the two that I like and then the other two I really love. This is Midnight Mahogany and this is described as black plum, cinnamon leaf, and dark mahogany. The plum and the mahogany together are just lovely. So this is different. I don't know that I've ever smelled anything quite like this. Oh, it's just lovely. So the mahogany, mahogany is a very rich, deep wood and it has a little edge to it. You know, it can be, and again, I'm kind of going back to um, the Bath and Body Works treatment of it, but it, that is more on the colony and sharp side where this is not, this is very warm. But it does have a, a little bit of an edge to it. The nature of mahogany it is that it's rich and slightly, um, there's almost a bitterness to it. So then you have that lovely dark plum and what a nice balance that makes because it gives the sweetness and the, the dark fruit, just it gives a deliciousness to it and brings it up, kind of takes away that, that edge. So it's lovely. And then cinnamon leaf, I really didn't get much cinnamon. There's just, a, again, subtle. The handling of the spices in general was a lighter hand than we sometimes see with not just Scentsy, but, but Bender Wax as well. Sometimes the spices are overdone and these are more subtle, which is just great. I like spices, but often, you know, people just chuck it in there. <laughs> it's too much. Handled with, with restraint. So beautiful, uh, this was uh, uh, for about nine hours, the plum and the mahogany maintain an equal blend. And then after that, the plum does fall away. So later in the evening, it became more about the mahogany and a little bit of that edge reappeared, excuse me, reappeared. Um, but for the bulk of the day, I would say for 16 hours, the blend of the plum and the mahogany are just perfection, beautiful. So I really like this. Medium high, this was um, for hours one to six, it was about an eight, and then it started dropping off, but not that much, about a six to a seven, and that remained so for the 24 hours. So really strong for the first part of the day, and then just slightly less so for the next up to 24 hours. So that's Midnight Mahogany and in the A group for me. All right, and then these last two are my favorites. So first of all, we have Golden Wreath, and this is a beige-ish, orange -ish kind of wax, and Golden Wreath is described, oh, excuse me, Golden Garland, yeah. Um, golden Garland, this one is described as pine needles, marigold, sparkling orange twist. Now, what is that? So to me, I didn't know if they meant that, like a beverage, like a sparkling orange beverage, because I don't know what it's twisted with. Often twist implies a vanilla, but they don't say that, so anyway and then musk so we have a lot of scents in the wax world with orange and pine together but and that is it's nice but what makes this a little more special is the introduction of that marigold marigold is not a heady floral it's more of that dry autumnal kind of kind of flower that it, there's not a, so much of a sweetness to it but it gives it gives it almost a wildflower quality to it so it's not something that's headache inducing. It's just, it's a very beautiful fall flower. So late summer to fall. So to me that tempers the pine and the orange. The, the pine and the orange and the marigold are just beautifully blended. So the familiarity of the pine and the orange that you've gotten from a lot of other scents in the world, but then that marigold makes it something dry and special. The musk, I can't say I got a lot of musk. Uh, maybe that's just warming it up slightly. So absolutely beautiful fragrance, and again, somewhat different. So uh, from a scent performance standpoint, this was high, high uh, performer for eight uh, hours, was an eight to a nine, and then uh, for hours up to 16, so through the evening, it was about a seven to an eight, and then overnight, because I get up, usually get a drink of water, um, six to a seven. When I got up, it was still a six to a seven at tw the 24 hour mark. So good performer, long lasting. So that is Golden Garland right there. And I want this in my life forever. It will go into my already exploding club. My club is out of control. 
I will do a different video on that. <laughs> Out of control, but I don't care. I think this year, since he did some gorgeous spring and fall fragrances, and now, or excuse me, spring and summer, and now more in the fall, so yeah, my club is in trouble, but it's okay. So last and top of the list for me is Dashing, and this is the other mahogany fragrance, so kind of a cornflower blue. And Dashing is described, and again, I was worried about this because I thought, oh, mahogany, you know, it's beautiful. This is vanilla, excuse me, yeah, vanilla creamy mahogany, which I found interesting. What is creamy, creamy wood? And then fresh night skies. So not sure what that is, but they've added a, you know, some, some pixie dust. Uh, it does have a freshness about it. So whatever, wherever that's coming from, maybe it's like a, an ozone type of addition. This one, it's just, again, I was concerned that the mahogany would be biting or cologne and not at all with the vanilla. It, it's just so warm and cozy and inviting. This is absolutely stunning. I just wasn't expecting that. It really well done, Sensi. This is a beautiful fragrance. Um, this one uh, was a steady eight and threw well. I smelled this everywhere in the house. It's a good thrower, steady for 24 hours at an eight. So really good medium high performer. I think this would, most of these are good performers. I will say that the weakest of the bunch were the cranberry and cardamom and um, yeah, Midnight Mahogany was a slightly less uh, effective thrower than this one. So really, I think most of this collection will do well in open concept. So just to wind this one up, great, you know, steady performer, long lasting, and such a, a warm, cozy, inviting, warm wood softened by the vanilla. Absolutely beautiful, and that is dashing. And that is also going into my already exploding club. So how are we on time? Yeah, I'm gonna stop. Um, I'm gonna stop here. I'm actually going to wind this up because I only have 23 minutes and we are at 2217. This phone is kind of uh, heartless. <laughs> All right, so I'll do life update in, in the uh, Harvest Collection video. Thank you so much for watching. I have missed all of you, and I will look, for, I'll look forward to talking with you uh, later. Take care. Hug your loved ones. Bye-bye.